we are working on applying our techniques of differentiation and seeing how the derivative and helps us in lots of different situations. So we know that the derivative can tell us any one of these things here, slope of the tangent line, slope of the original equation, instantaneous rate of change, and instantaneous velocity. So in my next example, we have the function f of x equals x plus 1 times x minus 7, and we want to find the equation of the tangent line at the point x equals 4. I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can do this guy on your own. Okay, to take the derivative of this, we cannot take the derivative of it as is because it uses a multiplication, which none of our differentiation techniques applied to multiplication other than the constant multiple rule, which we don't have here. It's not a constant times something else. We have a function times a separate function. So I cannot take the derivative of it in this format, but it is easy enough manipulated into a better format. All we have to do is we have to FOIL here. So first, x times x gives me x squared. Outside gives me a negative 7x. Inside gives me a positive 1x. So together, those give me a negative 6x. And last, 1 times negative 7 gives me a negative 7. Now, this is in pure polynomial format, so to take the derivative of it and apply our techniques of differentiation, it should be pretty straightforward. So I'm going to take the derivative, meaning I'm going to use my derivative notation, f prime of x. I have a power rule, so 2 times x subtracting a power gives me to the first power, which we don't typically write. A sum rule, so minus the derivative of 6x, constant multiple rule, 6 times this, so I just carry down my constant. I take the derivative of x, which is just 1, because remember if I were to subtract a power, it would be to the 0 power, which simplifies to be 1. And the derivative of 7 gives me 0. So simplifying this, my derivative is 2x minus 6. Okay. What we want now is we want the equation of the tangent line. So we have an equation of the line. We can either use the format of y equals mx plus b, or I prefer the format of y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, my point slope format. So if I need to plug in something for slope, I know that I'm just going to use my derivative equation. Well, if I want to know what my slope is at 4, I just substitute 4 in for my derivative equation. So my slope is f prime of 4, which is 2 times 4 minus 6, or 8 minus 6, or just 2. So that's what I'm going to substitute in for my m value there. Okay. The other thing that we need to substitute in is a point. So x minus, I need to substitute in my x value. Well, my x value is almost always given to us. So our x value here is guaranteed to be 4. That's pretty easy. But I also need to substitute something in for my y value, and that was not given to us. Well, the way that we find our y value is we plug in our point in question into our original equation. So y is equal to f of x, or in this instance, f of 4. So that gives me 4 plus 1 times 4 minus 7, or 5 times a negative 3, or negative 15. So that's what I'm going to substitute in for my y value. Now, all I have to do is solve for y. So back to our algebra techniques. Let me cancel out my double negatives and distribute my 2. That gives me y plus 15 is equal to 2x minus 8. Subtract my 15 over from both sides. And that gives me y is equal to 2x minus 8. 23. So this is my alleged equation of the tangent line. 
Now you can check this with your graphing calculator. And you can check the full thing, check my full equation, or I can check each individual part. I can check to make sure that I got my right y value, and I can check to make sure that I got the right slope. So the very first thing that we need to do is plug in our equation into y equals. So I'm going to plug in my equation given to us as is. So that was x plus 1 times x minus 7. Graph it on the standard window. And here is my equation. Now we wanted to find our tangent line when x is equal to 4. So if we look at 4 here, here's my x value of 4. If I compare that to the graph, I can't quite see it. So I'm going to adjust my window here to make sure that I can see everything that I hope to see. So I need to adjust my y minimum value. And let me go down to negative 30. And since that's quite a ways, let me change my y scale to 5. Okay, so now I can see everything on my graph. And in fact, I might have went a little bit too far because I actually have a lot of dead space down here. So we want to check our slope. We want to check our y value. And we want to double check our equation of the tangent line. Let's start with the y value. When we check the y value, the easiest way to do that is to push the trace feature and then just type in your x value, which is 4. If you hit enter, it should give you the y value that we came up with, and that was correct, y equals 15. If you want to double check your slope, you do second, calculate, use option 6, dy dx for the derivative, and again you type in your x value, which was 4, and hit enter. And notice our dy dx is equal to 2. So that is correct. So to double check the equation of our tangent line, we just substitute that in for our second y equation here. The equation that we came up with was 2x minus 23. So that's what I type in, 2x minus 23. So I have my original equation. And I have my tangent line. Now, my tangent line should intercept my original equation at the point in question, which was at 4. And that does look like they intercept at that point there. And they should have the same slope. And that also double checks as well. So we have double checked every single thing in this equation, which means we've done our math right and we got the right answer. So this is how you can find the equation of the tangent line using these techniques of differentiation. So basically, we get to do shortcuts in this step right here. Go ahead and get right into my last example. Find the rate of change of y equals 3t squared minus 4t plus 7 when t naught is equal to 1. So specifically, this problem says the rate of change. We know that that's what our derivative does for us. So we need to find the rate of change of this here, which means we need to take the derivative of it. Now, typically when our notation is y, we use the derivative notation dy dx. Well, that's because our equation is a variable of x. That's not the case here. Our equation is a variable of t. So instead of dy dx, we should be doing dy dt. This is saying that we're taking the derivative of my y equation with respect to the variable of t. Now, this is in the format that we want it to be in of a constant times x to some power, and so on and so forth. So that means I can just jump right into taking the derivative of it. And I challenge you to pause the video and do this problem on your own. Okay, first I have 3 times the derivative of t squared, where I bring my 2 down. So skipping a step here, I'm going to have 3 times 2, which gives me 6t. Technically t to the first power, since I subtracted an exponent, but we don't write that. Minus 4 times the derivative of t, which we know just to be 1, plus the derivative of 7, which is just 0. 
So the derivative of this equation here is dy dt equals 6t minus 4. Now, if I want the rate of change, that's like saying what is the slope. So all I have to do is I have to plug in my point in question into my equation. So the notation dy dt evaluated when t naught is equal to negative 1. Now, don't get confused there because they use t naught rather than just t. It means the exact same thing. So all I have to do is plug that into my equation. 6 times negative 1 minus 4 gives me negative 6 minus 4 or negative 10. So my final answer here, dy dt evaluated when t naught is equal to negative 1 is equal to negative 10. I've shown you how to double check this on the calculator, so let's do that real quick. The first thing that we need to do is plug this in. I'm going to use my x variable instead of the t, but it means the exact same thing. So 3x squared minus 4x plus 7. Graph it on my standard window. And then I can check my slope by doing second, calculate, dy dx, so option 6, and I plug in our value in question, which in this problem, we were trying to figure out what our rate of change is when t is equal to negative 1. So I need just to type in negative 1. Notice here, my dy dx shows up as negative 10, which is what we got, so that means that we have came up with the correct answer. So we now know how to find the rate of change using our four shortcuts or our four differentiation techniques. Hopefully after all of these videos, you know how to apply all these shortcuts properly and you're going to find it's much easier than using the definition of the derivative in all problems.